Okay, I am now ready to print from the G code that I used Fusion 360 to create for that component that I had modeled up in Fusion. So I'm here at my CR10 S5. I'm going to go ahead and get the print started. So I'm going to tell it to print from the, the transfer card. And there is that G code file. It actually blends in right with all my other ones that are right from Cura. So it actually looks like, um, like any other the other ones I would have created from Cura. Go ahead and get started on this one. Obviously, it's going to have to take a few minutes here to heat up the bed and the nozzle. You can see that it's using the 50 degree bed temperature that I set in the G code. And my bed over here, I use a glass bed. That's what came with my CR10 S5. I've got the bed leveled, at least to my specifications of my little process. And then I've I used the Elmer's glue. Um, that seems to be working the best for me in terms of bed adhesion. So uh, I'm not going to have you sit here and watch the little temperature gauges climb up. Once we get a little bit closer, I'll restart the video here and we'll kind of see that priming line and see how this thing works from there. So we'll uh, pause for a moment and we'll be right back. So I'm all heated up now and the printer is ready to go. This is the first time I've ever run the priming line on the G-Code, so it's a little bit different than the Cura. It's running a little bit slow, but, uh, you know, new printer, uh, G-Code, so it's uh, sometimes we might have to troubleshoot a few things here or there. There, that priming line started to lay down a little bit. I had to take off a little bit of section of it. It always seems to have a trouble sticking. Uh, I don't put glue in the area where the priming line goes down. It usually pulls right up. And I actually have a tendency to pull it up before, like as soon as it's done, just to kind of get it out of the way. Interesting here. Um, again, kind of run it slow, which is interesting. But it's something I could definitely troubleshoot uh, if I'm going to do this more frequently. And the only PLA I have right now is black, so it's going to probably have a hard time, might have a hard time seeing it there. It's showing up pretty nicely on my glass. It's initial layer speed's a little slow for my liking. I, I have a tendency to run them slow anyway, just because I'm a little bit uh, more cautious when it comes to my printing. intention of standing here for six plus hours or almost six hours trying to record this whole thing and I don't have a rig to, to automatically time lapse this so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, I'm going to stop this I'm going to come back and check a little bit later once we get a little bit further along take a peek at it and show you what we've got then and then we'll maybe try to check in a little bit closer to the ending time all right see you in a few seconds okay so we're about 39 minutes into the print it just finished a layer, now it's doing the outline of the holes and the whole shape here. You can see we've gotten past uh, the brim, and we're definitely working on individual layers. We're probably still working on the initial layers at, uh, you know, again, like 39, 40 minutes in. So we will check here maybe in just a bit. We'll talk to you in just a second. So we're about an hour and a half in. You can see that it's definitely gotten to the point where the first layer, the first wall's done. It did some gyroid infill. And now it's getting up to the point where the one layer, uh, or the one level, starts turning into a flat for the one pocket. So just checking in on it here. We'll uh, check on it again here in a little bit. Okay, so we are about five hours and 20 minutes into the print. You can see it's doing a pretty nice job. It's doing the outside edge, and there is the gyroid infill. And 
just kind of my general assessment at this point is that really not much different than uh, any of the G code that I got out of Cura, which if you think about it, you know, they're, they're all going to be maybe a slight differentiation, uh, but really for the most part, going to be mostly the same, especially for the part. The things that you're going to maybe find some differences is like um, that priming line, how Acura kind of goes this direction for maybe about six inches. In this case, uh, Fusion ran it almost the entire uh, width of the bed along that outer edge, which really is not a big deal. It might, in some cases, having more might be better. Uh, but and so far, I would say that this is pretty much on par with what I'd expect. You wouldn't expect this to be that different. I um, wanted to try it out, of course, to see what this looks like. We'll catch it up here when it's over. Like I said, I've probably got the timer on this thing isn't always 100% dead on to what the program states. Uh, so I have a feeling that I probably have about another hour or so to go. But we'll check in with it one last time once this thing is all done. Okay, you can see that we are done. And uh, just one thing that I'm noting here about the end of the program compared to, say, Cura's. Cura's does what it calls present mode, where it pushes the bed all the way forward, kind of just moves uh, the X all the way over to zero, and just kind of just goes up a little bit higher than uh, what it needed to for Z here. Push Z all the way up to the top, which I think is a little bit unnecessary. Uh, something we could probably customize in a post if we really, really wanted to. It took us about just uh, under seven hours. Looking at the part here, it came out pretty much exactly like we'd expect. So not anything uh, out of the ordinary there, but that's what we should expect. Uh, the only thing I'm really kind of frustrated and annoyed about is the fact that it pushed it all the way up to the Z, which that's a lot of travel for, for not a whole lot of reason. And then you can see here my my cables kind of got a little bit stretched. Um, I'm not really pleased about that. But other than that, we should be uh, in good shape with this part. So here is my finished part. Everything looks pretty good on it. I would say that I'm pretty pleased with the way Fusion created the G-code for this file. So thinking back of what I might change if I do this again, one of the things was that park position. So if I open up the G-code here and I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see there is a comment move to park position and it's got G0 moving Z all the way up to 490. So it wasn't all the way to the 500, but it was pretty close. And then it moves X and Y to zero. So I could come in here and just remember to change this, kind of pick a number that I know is high enough to clear the model. Probably the better thing to do and what I would probably try next is just disable that park position. So here in my print settings, I could just edit this. And if you remember on the G code tab, there was end at park position. I would turn that off the next time I ran something from fusion here and just see what it looked like. If I don't like that, then I would maybe use that park position. And if actually, if I like the idea of having the bed pushed forward, I could even change this Y to maybe something like 450 or whatever. I know that typically when I turn the printer off, I actually put the bed at, at 300 just because it's not too far off the end of my table. So maybe I'll do something like that. So just some ideas for what I could do next time. Well, that's all for now. I know I learned a lot going through this process. Hopefully you've learned uh, some stuff too. Maybe you can give Fusion 360 a try next time you're ready to create some G-code for additive manufacturing. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear what your experience might be if you've tried this, how well it worked, uh, maybe some things that you would have changed or you didn't like. Uh, I'd love to hear those comments. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.